Recently, when I was browsing through YouTube, I happened to come across this beautiful animation by a creative designer called Online Tutorials, and this is how the animation looks. It's absolutely beautiful, but the thing is, this animation was done using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, none of which I have any idea about. All I know is PowerPoint, so I thought why not take up the challenge of recreating the same animation using PowerPoint and see how far I'm able to match the animation. So a huge shout out to online tutorials. If you happen to be in the CSS space, then these guys seem to be pretty good. Before I share with you my journey of the kind of obstacles I faced in recreating the animation, I'm Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com, the creator of comprehensive all-in-one PowerPoint bundle a collection of more than 4,000 premium PowerPoint animated templates that help you top quality slides quickly. The link is in the description box below. First, let us knock the easy parts out. Change this background by going to right click format background and use a dark colored background like this. Then using the rectangle tool, draw a bar which is at the bottom of the slide and then give it a white fill and say no outline. Next, I went to insert icons and used some of the icons that are right inside PowerPoint and lined them up like this. Can you see here? Each one of these is icons taken from PowerPoint. And then I gave a title for each of these icons and ensured that these text elements are outside the slide area. Can you see here? This is where the slide ends. And then we have these text elements below that. The next step is to create the circular ball which would move across the white bar depending on the icon clicked. So I created a circle using the oval tool in auto shapes and gave it a bright color which is quite visible and then I needed to ensure that this somehow merged with the rest of the design here. It should look like the ball belongs to the slide area and is extending into the white bar rather than the other way around where some ball is jutting out of the white bar. How do we achieve that? It's fairly simple. You give it an outline which is in the color of this one. So you go to format shape, go to line tool and then make sure that there is a solid line and the color of this is picked using eyedropper tool and then you click on this. Now you have the outline and I ensured that the width of this is six points. Now the circle integrates quite nicely into this design and it looks as if the circle belongs to this area and it has just gone into this white space. But still we have a problem. If I go to the original design, you can see that we have this curved element here, which makes this whole thing look so beautiful. Now, how do we make that in PowerPoint? That is when I thought of a simple idea. I went to Auto Shapes Gallery. From rectangles, I picked up this tool here called as Rectangle Diagonal Corners Rounded. I selected that and I drew the shape like this. I can increase the curvature like so and that looks quite nice. Then I made a duplicate of this by pressing Ctrl D and then I made sure that it is flipped vertical. Then I ensured that both of them are aligned properly by going to align middle and align center. I just needed this corner here. So I selected this shape at the back, held the shift button down, selected the next shape and then went to shape format, merge shapes and said shape subtract. Now we have this shape created. Now I don't really need two of these pieces, so I can of course remove one of them by going to this rectangle tool, select this, hold the shift button down and select this, and once again do shape subtract. Now we have this piece isolated. Copy this onto this slide here, so it is easy for us to pick the color from here. Then go to shape fill, go here to color, pick up the eyedropper tool and then click on this color. And now this one has the same color as this background. Go to shape outline, say no outline, and then move this piece over here. It is way too big. Hold the shift button down and then let us reduce the size ever so slightly. And then you can place it in such a way that the top part aligns with this top part of this white box. And then you use your right arrow key to ensure that the placement is just right. And then bring this blue ball to the front now you can see that this portion looks like it is cut off from this white bar. Isn't that beautiful? Let us select this, make a duplicate of this by using Ctrl D and then flip it horizontally and then place it exactly the same way that we did earlier. Then use your left arrow key and make sure that the positioning is right and then make sure that this ball is brought to front. Now we have this curved shape very beautifully shown. Now. I can select this one and then these two pieces, press Ctrl G. Now we have this group. 
that gives the illusion that this is a ball that is moving across the space here. Can you see as I move, it looks as if the weight of this is making this white bar bend down. So what we have got so far are icons, the titles, and we have this beautiful shape that would run across this bar. The next step is to duplicate the slide by going to duplicate slide option. Here, I don't really want any of these icons. I will make four more copies of this. So in total, we have six slides. Can you see here? We have six icons, so we need to have six slides. So let me right click, go to duplicate slide once again, and then to repeat the same action, I'm going to use the shortcut called F4 once, twice, and thrice. So now we have six slides in total. Now let us go to the first slide and ensure that there is a hyperlink between these icons and their corresponding slides. The way you do that is you click on the second icon and we want this to lead to the second slide. The way we do that is we use the shortcut called Control K, which is the shortcut for hyperlink. Then go to place in this document in this dialog box and say we want to connect this icon to slide two and you say OK. Then we select this Control K and say slide three OK and do the same thing for the remaining ones as well. Now that each of these icons links to their corresponding slides, I can select all of these. Remember, I'm only selecting these five icons and not the sixth one. We will do this a little later. Let me press Ctrl C to copy, then go to the other slides and you just paste by using Ctrl V option. This ensures that all of these icons are pasted quite nicely in the same place. Since we had duplicated the first slide, you can see that all these titles are also in place already. Now let us go to the first slide, select this icon, press Ctrl C, go to the second slide, press Ctrl V. Now this needs to point to the first slide. So let us press Ctrl K and then say this takes me to slide one and say OK. Now I'm going to copy this hyperlinked icon by pressing Ctrl C and then I would paste the same icon in the rest of the slides and this saves a huge amount of time. And just to demonstrate to you how each of these icons link to the different slides, I have numbered each of these slides. Of course, we will remove these numbers because they are not part of the design. Let me go to the first slide and I go to slideshow. Now you can see when I go to this third icon, when I click on it, it should take me to slide number three. I click and it takes me to slide number three. Here is five, here is six, here is one, here is three, here is two. So everything is linked quite beautifully. Since we did our hyperlinking first and then copied these icons to the various slides, it made our life so much easier. To give a super quick recap, dark background, white rectangle, six icons inserted, titles away from the slide area, created the shape, then we hyperlinked each of these icons to their respective slides. Now we are ready to take it to the next level. On the first slide, we are going to have this positioned right over here, right above the first icon. Make sure that the center of this shape corresponds with the top edge of this white bar. Then you right click and bring this to front and move it up using your arrow key so that it is right in the center of this blue ball. If you feel that it is not in the right place, then make sure that you adjust the positioning of the blue ball so everything is proper. Then we need to have the corresponding title right below this icon. So I'm going to use my up arrow key and then I'm going to place it over here. Now this is the perfect positioning for slide number one. Just to ensure that the positioning of the icons and the text are proper, we are going to use guides. So let us right click on this and then go to grid and guides, click on this flyout menu and say add horizontal guide and let us move this guide so that it is smack at the top of this white bar. Then I am going to move this guide so that it is right in the center so we know where exactly we need to move this icon to. Then let us make a duplicate of this horizontal grid by holding the control button I can click and drag so that the bottom end of this corresponds with the bottom end of this text element. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for the remaining icons as well so I hold the control button down and make sure that this is right in the center. Do the same thing for the next icon, the next icon, the next icon and the final icon. Now let me go to slide number two. All I need to do is to use my right arrow key and ensure that this is placed right in the center. Can you see here, we can have this top circle correspond with this guide 
and then we have this icon and then we can use our up arrow key and ensure that the positioning of this is proper so the center of the icon corresponds with this intersection and then I can ensure that I can use my up arrow key and the bottom edge of the text corresponds with this horizontal guide here. Now we have got our second slide in place go to third and repeat the same process Now the positioning of the elements is done. Next, let us apply morph transition to all the slides. So let us select all of them by using control A, go to transitions and say morph transition. And you can reduce the duration of this to somewhere around one second. Now, when I go to slideshow, let us see if everything works fine. I go to slide number three. This is how it shows. Slide number two, beautiful, four, six, five, everything works beautifully now this is the slide deck i created as part of the project we have the first slide here when i go to slide number three these are elements taken from our comprehensive all-in-one powerpoint bundle when i go to slide number five we have this again taken from the same bundle then go to slide number six same bundle again slide number two can you see you can really create some impressive interactive animated slide deck when you take elements from our comprehensive all-in-one powerpoint bundle to design your slides and follow the set of instructions that I gave you to create this kind of an interactive animation. The link to our comprehensive all-in-one PowerPoint bundle is in the description box below the video. You can click on the link and check out details about this useful product. In the meantime, if you want to learn how I created an animated video in PowerPoint, just click on the link and watch the fun video which has more than a million views. All you need to do is to click on the link and start watching the video to pick up some useful PowerPoint animation tips you can use in your next presentation. Go ahead, click on the link and start watching the video right now.